Hello, YouTube. So, we we have done Zhongli. Now it's time for Ganyu, the second of our reruns for 2.4 second half. Ganyu, this is the first time she is returning to the event banners. She has been away for 11 months. She was... She came with a lot of apprehension in the, in the early days. People didn't know that she was going to be that good. And then she came onto the scene and absolutely rolled everyone with an, a massive amount of cryo damage output for a bow character and she is going to be in very high demand probably on this first of her reruns in genshin so also there is a lot to take into account for ganyu because a lot has changed since she was first run obviously that's why we're looking at shinha on the screen right now because shinha is going to be very good for ganyu to partner with her but that is something we will get on to a little bit later so Ganyu. Why Ganyu? She's a cryo bow character and one of the highest DPS number outputting characters in the game. She will, once built right, do some incredible damage. And you will see some incredible numbers on your screen when you do it. She is obviously very, very good in terms of her character design. And I think a lot of people will agree she's very nice to look at. But Ganyu is your trusty secretary from Liyue. This is going to be a heavy Liyue rerun banner with Zhongli and the four stars that are with her. Jingcho, Beidou, and Yan Fei. Jingcho is going to probably partner quite well with Ganyu for that Hydro application in freeze comps. Also, you could see a bit of Beidou run, but I don't expect so too much in Yan Fei for mounts if you wanted to as well. But that's enough talk about those four stars. Ganyu, she has a lot of options. Mainly, you've got two build paths for Ganyu in terms of a sub DPS build or a main DPS build. Most people, I believe, do go for main DPS builds for Ganyu, but that is entirely your opinion on what, which build path you go down, and that is something that really depends on what how you want to use Ganyu and what your what your use case is, depending on what you have available to you already on your account. So that's. That's obviously something that will be very personal to you, but we will go through both build paths in this video as always. So, Ganyu Ascensions for level 80 and level 90. Level 80, you're going to need somewhere in the region of 1,268,905 Mora. We got there in the end. That's pretty standard for your level 80 level up. It's quite a bit of Mora, not going to lie. It's about all I've got in the bank on this account right now. But... It is what it is. She's going to want Whopper Flower Nectar. A lot of people do like their Whopper Flowers. So if you're not already grinding Whopper Flowers ahead of a Ganyu's rerun and you are looking to get Ganyu, I recommend you get grinding those Whopper Flowers. She's going to need 18 Whopper Flower Nectar, 30 Shimmering Nectar, and 12 Energy Nectar to get her to level, eight, level 80. So do get investing into that. Those Shivada Jade Slivers, Fragments, Chunks, and Gemstones are going to come in handy here as well. Gemstones don't come into it until that last 10 levels above level 80. But... So level 80, you're going to need the slivers, the fragments, and the chunks for those cryo builds. As per usual, the one, 247 heroes as per usual with these level 80 level ups. Xing Qin for the uh, materials as well, 108 of them. And Hall Frost Cores from the Cryo Regis Vine, 26 of them for level 80. For level 90, this all increases. So 2,092,530 Mora, 419 heroes with 168 Xing Qin. Uh... 46 of the Hoarfrost cores, and then you're going to add another 6 gemstones into that from the Shivada Jade and a, some more energy nectar up to 36 instead of 12 for her ascensions to level 90. Again, you will probably be fine with level 80. When you get between level 80 and level 90, you start to see diminishing returns for the amount of investment it requires. But it depends whether you really want to heavily invest into Ganyu. If you want to heavily invest into Ganyu, then I really do recommend going the full way because... She's an incredible character. I did it for Hu Tao. I would be a hypocrite if I said any other way if you're going to invest into her, especially if she's going to be that main DPS. Um, then I really do think it's worth investing into her. On to Miss Ganyu's talents. So, so, so. She has obviously three talents as everyone else does. She has some very interesting abilities for those talents. So obviously her normal attack is going to be those bow attacks. You are probably not going to use her normal attacks all that much. You're probably going to use many, many charge shots with Ganyu. That's where her priority damage comes out of. And this also is where her 
one biggest downfall comes in because when you are trying to get those charge shots charged you are liable to interruption this is where we were talk we bring it in zhong li in the last guide video and obviously people like diona toma can also help out with this with barrier procs that can prevent her from being interrupted during those charge shot animations she needs those charge shots to basically get the most out of her dps if you can't get those charge shots off ganyu is going to struggle and that is her biggest downfall when it comes to playing her she is relied on those charge shots unlike someone like yoimiya although yoimiya does require the normal attack string fully uh completed to get the most damage out of her so she also runs into those interruption problems if that happens which you know, we know in enemies in genshin can interrupt you a lot in those charged or strings of animations that are going to cause you a lot of issues trailer to Jillian is her elemental skill at least behind a lotus flower which will taunt enemies they will attack that lotus flower and deviate from attacking you this gives her the opportunity to get those charge shots off make it easier for her to get those charge shots off without her enemies crowding her face basically it is a deterrent it will explode after a certain period of time or it is destroyed and it will deal a substantial amount of damage once leveled it's not a bad elemental skill ability and it's really i, I like ganyu's kit i think it's very very diverse celestial siawa is her elemental skill and elemental, elemental burst i should say it is an aoe of cryo damage shards which are rained down upon opponents it is a very very good aoe ability it does apply that cryo to the enemies as well it will target enemies within it and so it's not completely random i do not believe but this is another really nice ultimate a uh, really nice elemental burst ability for her and she does have some passives obviously we have undivided heart which is after firing a frost frost flake arrow which is a charge shot the crit rate of the subsequent frost flake is and the resulting bloom effects is increased by 20 percent that is actually really nice that means you do need crit rate on ganyu to an extent simply because obviously she is bow so you can you can aim basically for the first shot but the bloom will need the crit otherwise you are not going to crit with that bloom and obviously you can't aim that bloom so that is something to take into account with ganyu as well so that's going to help with that passive and then the second passive is celestial shower granting 20 percent cryo damage bonus to active party members in the aoe again so if you stick in that celestial showers aoe the aoe of her elemental burst you will get a cryo damage bonus so if you're running a heavy cryo party maybe with shenha that does fall into her category then that is going to give you that 20 percent bonus really really good and then her passive basically is a crafting passive where it refunds 50 percent of the all used when crafting bow type weapons which are going to come in very handy because well there's a lot of options for getting you in terms of leveling those talents then you're going to need teachings of diligence those are the books you will need for her talents for Ganyu to level 6 you'll need 367,500 Mora with 9 of those teachings of diligence and 63 of the blue guide to diligence to get her to those levels on all of her talents. Whopper Flower Nectar you will need 18 of and 66 of the Shimmering Nectar to get her to that level as well. If you want to go all out and go to level 10 on her talents and crown her then you will need 4,957,500 Mora. Yes it goes up quite steep when you get to those high levels. It's, I believe it's 750,000 Mora to crown a character from level 9 to level 10. So that's for each talent, remember? So it is a lot of Mora. You'll need that 9 teachings of diligence with those 63 guide to diligences, but you'll need then 114 philosophies of diligence, the gold type books. You'll need 9 Whopper Flower Nectar, 66 with Shimmering Nectar with 93 Energy Nectar. So this is why we need to grind those Whopper Flowers if you haven't started so already because there is going to be a lot needed 18 shadow with the warrior from the child drop bosses for those weekly bosses and then obviously three crown of insights as ever uh diligence talents books will always be available on tuesday friday and sunday from taishan mansion talent priority if you're going for a main dps can you you will want to prioritize her normal attacks which will buff the damage output of her normal and charge attacks obviously then you will go for your first while the elemental skill will be the least of your priorities you want to get the most damage output out of her then the normal attacks on your bursts are going to be where to put it if you're going for a sub dps can you then you will be looking to get the burst leveled up as a priority then your elemental skill and then leaving your normal attacks because she will not be on the field for that long 
you are just going to be swapping into her to use that elemental burst and the elemental skill and then you'll be swapping straight back out again to your main dps or your other supports so then you won't need those normal attacks because you won't be using them so that's where you want to prioritize getting those other two leveled up but that's completely up to you and obviously you hardcore ganyu mains will be wanting to level it all because you want to triple count crown your beautiful cryo queen anyway moving on from ganyu's talents time to talk about her build so her best in slot weapon will be the five star amos bow that will be coming back i believe on the weapons banner for you to pull for if you so wish to although she has a lot of options when it comes to her bows that you can use on her so it is not essential you use amos bow there are obviously other options like skyward harp which would also be fine Viridescent Hunt from the Battle Pass will also do quite well for her. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Springless can work. Why? Especially when using her in Melt Comps or Freeze Comps, the Elemental Mastery on the Stringless can help out quite a bit. Ganyu can have a little bit of Elemental Mastery on her, especially if you're using her in those Elemental Reaction Comps, which is very common for Ganyu to get the most out of her damage. You will probably use her in something like a Melt Comp. And therefore, Elemental Mastery is going to come in very, 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 very well because um, she will be the one that's proccing the reaction. And element, uh, you want Elemental Mastery on the person that is proccing the reaction, which will be your main DPS usually, probably Ganyu in this case. So that is something to be aware of if she is your main DPS. Uh, Hammer Yumi, which is the craftable Inazuman bow, is also quite good, although it is a little less, a uh, little, little less ideal than the Prototype Crescent which is available as a craftable weapon in general. Prototype Crescent, I believe, is her, first, her best F2P option and actually her best 4-star. It does give you that buff on crit as well, which is really, really good. Prototype, Prototype Crescent is going to be really, really good for her as well, but obviously I know Honorable mentions the Blacklift Warbow off of the shop, which I believe is in the shop right now, if the shop hasn't reset by the time this video goes out, which I don't think it has, um, is also a decent option, but not as good as I would uh, as the... Hami Yumi and the, and, the, and the prototype present, I believe, are her best four star options, followed up by the Viridescent Hunt and then probably Stringless. Stringless and Viridescent Hunt kind of battle it out depending on your needs and your use case, and then Black Cliff Warbow after that. Um, but Skyward Harp is very, very decent, but her best in stock will always be the Amos Bow. If you're looking for a support Ganyu, though, definitely think about things like the Stringless, maybe, or even Favonius Warbow for energy recharge to keep that elemental burst up and you can use that on cooldown that's what you're looking for ganyu to try and keep especially when on support or sub dps then you're looking to keep those elemental bursts up as you can rotate so off cooldown you want them available as often as possible as soon as you as soon as you change into her we got them in the end then you're going to want to use them and then be straight off of her again once more so Moving on to our artifacts. Artifacts for Ganyu. There are options. She does have options depending on your use case again. Two very prominent options will be a Wondrous Troop and it will be Blizzard Stray. Now, you can go for Four Piece Wondrous Troop. Well, Four Piece Wondrous Troop is a very good option considering its uh, ability to buff uh, crit damage and stuff like that. Uh, crit, buff attack for its four piece but there is a very significant drawback with wondrous troop and that is the fact there is no domain to run wondrous troop and grind it you have to grind it from world bosses this can only be done at a certain pace so a lot of people may not have a very good wondrous troop set to put on ganyu this is where blizzard straya and noblesse oblige and even shimonar's reminiscence or gladiators can come in and fill those gaps in two piece sets so you could go two-piece Wondrous Troop with Blizzard Strayer as the other two-piece. This will give you that cryo bonus. Blizzard Strayer four-piece set can also very, very, very much well work. Blizzard Strayer is going to do well for freeze comps. And that is always going to be the case because you're applying cryo all of the time or you're always going to have cryo applied. But it's going to be great for those freeze comps. Then if you really are struggling for Blizzard Strayer and Wondrous Troop pieces, Obviously, Noblesse Oblige is going to be good, especially for a support, dam uh, support or sub-DPS Ganyu build because it will increase that elemental burst damage. 
which is something she's going to be relying on in those sub DPS support builds. And then obviously, Shimadars, Reminiscence, and Gladiators will always be a decent option to increase that attack percentage by 18% each. So if you want to run those two pieces of each of those, that's an option, but I wouldn't recommend it too much. If you can go for two piece Wondrous Troop or two piece Blizzard Strayer alongside that two piece Shimanawas or the Gladiators, both offer the same uh, perk of that 18% increase in attack. That would be ideal if you can't get the other options. But I personally, when I build my Ganyu, if I get her, will be trying to run the four piece Wondrous Troop if I can get good enough pieces for her. For her, I do have a four piece set. It's not a great set, but I want to do uh, some research on my own Ganyu when I get her so that I can see which one works best and I will work around the resources I have and that is the best case for uh, for building any character you have work around the resources you have so if you do there are some crazy weird builds you can do with bow characters which would mean going down to physical route but I'm not going to put them in this video because I really don't want to see a physical DPS Ganyu I'm sorry we really don't want to see a physical DPS guy and you are not making the most of your Ganyu if you do, do go down a physical route. There are options and I'm sure you know the physical D the physical DPS sets of artifacts if you really wanted to do it. In terms of your uh, stats for these artifacts, attack percentage on the sands is the normally a good choice. Cry damage bonus on the goblet is a very, very big, I don't say must, but a very, very big need for Ganyu because she's, she's just going to be seeing, doing so much cry damage with those charge shots, she's going to want that cry damage bonus. She's going to get so much out of it. I really do recommend it. And then crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, depending on your needs. The unique thing with Ganyu is that because she's cryo, because of her passives and, and stuff like that, she's not going to be need to be built with a massive amount of crit rate. So you can get away with somewhere in the region of 40% crit rate on Ganyu. And then you will see higher echelons of Ganyus having 200% crit damage and something like that. If you ha do have that ratio of crit to rate to crit damage, you should be fine with Ganyu. Especially if you're using her in a cryo comp with another cryo uh, character. That cry the, cryo um, the cryo resonance should provide you with enough crit rate to see you through in your comps. And then the substat attack percent crit crit. That is what you're looking for. Elemental mastery is an honorable mention as well. If you're looking for those elemental reactions, do take those into account as well. So teammates for miss ganyu this is where things get a little bit interesting so obviously we've said uh we've said it before about her being interrupted during her charge shots if you do want to prevent that people like zhongli who's your other banner rerun for this half of 2.4 diona for a more friendly option in terms of free to play four star less uh less uh need to build and you may already have a diona like i do um they are options for you toma as well etc Soma may also be able to proc some Mel reactions, although he's not ideal for it. Then if you want to use buffs, obviously Shenha is going to be very, very good with Ganyu. I have seen the numbers for a Ganyu paired with Shenha. Both of them built very, very well. If you can really do have Shenha and you can build both of these characters very well, you're going to see a substantial damage increase if you use Shenha with Ganyu in the right order. So again, that's a really good buffer for Ganyu and her damage output. And to be honest, you are going to see some crazy numbers if you get it right. I'm not going to lie. Then you have your pyro characters. Bennett, Lee, Zhang Ling, most likely. Zhang Ling is very good for most people. She is also free to play friendly. She is a very good investment for anyone who is early in the early stages of Genshin or even in the later stages of Genshin. She is really good for pyro application. This means that it's going to be great for melt or reverse melt comps to use with Ganyu. It's going to be really, really, really useful. It does mean that Ganyu has to be slightly close in the fight though, so she's going to need even more than ever that barrier to stop her from being interrupted in the charged attacks. Again, someone who can do a very, very good job of this is Klee. We don't talk about Klee all that much because she hasn't been on a rerun for a while. She might come up soon, who knows. But Klee can also proc those reactions as well. Bennett is a little bit of a unique case because he can apply that uh, pyro for those reverse melts. But he can also heal, which is also going to be very, very beneficial and give that also big buff to damage as well. If you want to see even bigger numbers, you could pair Shenha alongside Bennett with Ganyu and then an extra for a fourth, which could uh, could 
provide you with some very interesting numbers not going to lie and then obviously you've got the option of freeze comps this is where your hydro characters come in mona was the original for this she will give you that buff as well mona is still a very good option to give buff damage and the hydro damage output Xing Cho, who is on the banner with her is also another great option for hydro application with his elemental burst and his elemental skill it is easier to use Xing Cho with someone like hu tao and on singular enemies but it should be okay with ganyu if the Xing Cho is all you have probably the best hydro applicator right now or one of the best is going to be kokomi kokomi is fantastic at the moment and she should be able to do that for you in that case but that is a look at the teammates for miss ganyu okay then ganyu constellations do you already have ganyu or maybe you are looking to wail on ganyu in this banner either way ganyu constellations are still very good just like the other rerun for 2.4 like zhongli the two characters we have here are good for constellations as well which is not always the case for all the characters like Xiao's constellations aren't all that good and not all that beneficial to him but these constellations for these characters are always going to bring you something or other when it comes to building them so C1 will be Judrinka this is where the charge level 2 frost flake arrow or frost frost flake arrows or frost flake arrow blooms decrease opponent's cryo resistance by 50% for six of six seconds upon hit a hit also regenerates two energy for ganyu this effect can only occur once per charge level two frost flake hour arrow regardless if frost flake arrow itself or its bloom hits the target this means with cryo resistance being decreased this means that you are going to do in turn more damage two energy per hit or oh, oh, the regeneration of two energy means she's going to have her elemental burst up quicker this is going to mean more damage output in the long run this is also a great buff for her c1 is a nice one not her best but it is a nice one d2 this is where she can add one charge to her trail of the chillin this means that she can uh, produce two of those lotus flowers that has a beneficial effect for two reasons it's more damage output because the lotus flower does more damage it is more distraction and more taunt for enemies which means it allows you to get off those charge shots even easier than it was before especially if you've got that barrier as well so that is also another big beneficial to your damage output this is a lovely c2 a lovely c2 and if you want to go for it it's well recommended d3 is where we see the celestial shower which is her old uh, elemental burst this will be her talent going up by three when you have this fairly self-explanatory more damage then we see the c4 this is where opponents standing within the aoe of the celestial shower her elemental burst take increased damage this effect strengthens over time increased damage taken begins at five percent and increases by five percent every three seconds up to a maximum of 25 percent this effect lingers for three seconds after the opponent leaves the aoe this is a lovely constellation lovely constellation this is a lot more damage for ganyu and anyone who is in that aoe really really good because this means that most likely you're going to be doing 25 percent more damage in the long run once this builds up and that's just that's just lovely that is more and more damage more and more numbers more and more bigger numbers on the screen for ganyu really good stuff really good constellation constellation five is going to be three more levels on the trail of the chillin this means that you will be getting her uh getting her loads of flower to level 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 13 if you decide to crown her that is and again another lovely bit of damage increase but this is where things get interesting. C6. C6 Ganyu changes the way in which Ganyu can be played. You can still roll with the charge shot, charge shot, charge shot, charge shot. And I did that in a deliberate, deliberate way because of the speed. This is Quickscope Ganyu. So what I mean by Quickscope Ganyu, using Trail of the Chillin causes the next Frost Flake Arrow shot within 30 seconds to not require charging. So... This is where you start to find combos with Ganyu. You would charge shot. You would then do your elemental skill, the trail of the chillin. You would then charge shot again, which would not require charging. You would then, when you have C6, you have C2 anyway. So you would then trail of the chillin again and then charge shot again. This means you would be charge shot, trail of the chillin, charge shot, trail of the chillin, charge shot. This is where 
very high burst damage comes from Ganyu. It is a much faster way of playing Ganyu. And if you set it up right with Melt Comps, this is where you get your potential to just one shot entire mobs. Because it is, quite frankly, crazy. Absolutely crazy. So this is an incredibly powerful constellation. If you do decide to whale on Ganyu and get C6, you will not be disappointed. You will have a very powerful Ganyu once built. And she can do incredible damage at that, at that level. So she has really good constellations. C2, C4, and C6 are definitely your highlights. And she is well worth... You can, in my opinion, if I was to pull, get both of them, and then if I was to just casually pull and end up getting another Ganyu, then I would not be disappointed. I would not be disappointed whatsoever. So yeah, there's a lot of potential here. And yeah, if you're willing to whale, some people are, then you won't be disappointed. Okay, time to round this out then. We have looked through all of the stuff relating to Ganyu's up and coming rerun for 2.4 second half. She is an incredibly good damage output for Genshin players alike. She rivals the best in the game. When you talk about some of the highest DPS potential players, uh, DPS potential characters, I should say, in the game, you will put people like Hu Tao or Eula in that conversation, but you will put Ganyu in there as well. And I suppose Raiden Shogun in terms of her, bur her burst potential as well. Um, Ganyu is incredibly good, and you can't go wrong pulling for Ganyu unless you have a massive amount of damage options already and possibly she would become surplus to requirements for you that's the only way you could possibly go wrong with ganyu there's obviously a very big decision to make on the 2.4 reruns between zhongli and ganyu if you don't have the option of pulling for both and don't have one of them already there's obviously a, a big problem but again that is something you have to take into account and if you do want ganyu i would do wish you the best of luck because i think she's a fantastic character i've wanted her for a long time and I'm hoping to get her on these reruns. And if I don't, I'm going to be very sad. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I do wish everyone the best of luck in pulling Ganyu, Zhongli in these reruns. And I hope you've had the best of luck in Zhao and Shenhe as well, if you have been going for them. Obviously, coming up in 2.5, we will see a new Electro character, most likely. And uh, I will see about her because I'm looking very forward to her. Um, and we will hopefully do this again for those as well. Stay tuned because I may also bring out graphics for Xingqiu, Beidou, and Yanfei, who are your four-star reruns with these two banners coming up in 2.4 second half. Do keep an eye out for them. Follow on the Insta, the Twitter, and the Twitch for everything to keep updated with, including those uh, Ascension guides, etc., which will be posted on the Instagram and Twitter when they are available. And keep up to date with all of my social medias for everything Genshin and, and other related stuff. Stay tuned for more content here. Of course, like, subscribe and share the video. I would really, really appreciate it. And it gets to more people who may need some help with their ascensions and knowing what they need to get these characters to where they want them to be. But I will be leaving it here for this one. Thank you ever so much for sticking through this lengthy video. I do appreciate all the support as ever. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.